brambly hedge runs along the edge of a cornfield. There's a hornbeam tree, several crabapple trees, a large tree stump overgrown with moss and ivy, some elderberry bushes, a splendid oak tree, and a clump of hawthorn. Brambles and honeysuckle, foxglove, ferns, and wild roses grow alongside in a tangle of leaves and stems. have their houses in the roots and trunks of trees. And if you look very hard next time you're out walking in the country, you may be lucky enough to catch a glimpse of a small window or an open door or a steep flight of stairs. If you do, you'll know that you have found Brambley Hedge. Wilfred Toadflax, Primrose's best friend, lives in the hornbeam tree with his mother and father, brother Teasel, and sisters Clover and Catkin. His father, Alfred Toadflax, is an easygoing mouse. He can often be found sitting on the step with a piece of bread and jam, watching the world go by. Uh, yes, my little daffodil. Have another cookie, Mr. Toad. He loves to eat, Thank you, and Mr. to be Tyler. truthful, is also a little <laughs> fond of snacks between salad? meals. <clears throat> uh, not at the moment, dear. Oh, do you mean to tell me you'd rather eat? Oh, I can dance any old time. <laughs> oh, Alfred, Alfred, have you managed to fix that basket yet, dear? Oh, I'm happy to say this is the last batch of cookies. Picnic time! Come on, Dad! Mom! Wilfred's mother, Betty, understands her husband's ways and is used to taking charge of the house and the children. Well, you just go and remind him that young mice never dig without the help of a grown-up. Well, now, time to cut the cake. Thank everyone, Wilfred. Oh, yeah. Thank you, everyone. Thank you all for my great present. Wilfred is a dreamer, too, but his dreams are all of action. He sees himself as an intrepid explorer, as he is always ready to set off on an adventure. He takes his knapsack with whistle, rope, and supplies on these adventures. One winter, he and Primrose really did have to rescue Basil from a collapsed snow tunnel. Oh! Wilfred! My sled! We'll have to get help. You wait here. But I'm not a waiting sort of mouse, Primrose. Uh, oh. uh, uh, Wilfred, don't! Uh, Wilfred! Uh, and another time, he had to run all the way along the riverbank to save Poppy and Dusty's wedding raft before it reached a dangerous bend and was carried away on the fast-flowing river. Because Wilfred likes to think of himself as adventurous, Primrose finds that she has to be the sensible one. Well, she is very sensible. She takes after her grandmother, Mrs. Apple, and at times she can feel very grown up when Wilfred is being particularly silly. You are? What? Now? But berry picking isn't an adventure. Oh, really? And who said it isn't? Everyone knows that adventures are exciting. Well, so is berry picking with my father. Come along and see. Primrose lives with her mother and father, Mr. and Mrs. Woodmouse, at the Old Oak Mansion. It's in the middle of the hedge and is a very important place for the mice. Yes, congratulations to you both. There has always been a Mr. Woodmouse living in the Old Oak Mansion. It is Mr. Woodmouse that the other mice turn to for help. 
It may be that there is a special celebration coming up, or an important decision to be made, or even that something dreadful has happened. The mansion's ballroom and the great hall are the only places big enough to hold all the mice when they are having special feasts or parties. Old Oak Mansion is enormous. There are many, many rooms. Some say that there is a secret staircase somewhere in the mansion. No one has found it yet, though Mrs. Apple read about it in an old book. No, I thought Primrose and Wilfred were with Mrs. you. Mrs. Daisy Woodmouse is Mr. and Mrs. Apple's daughter. When she first came to live at the mansion, she found it difficult to get used to the size of her new home. How would she ever feel comfortable here after her cozy life at Crabapple Cottage? But by the time she had hung fresh curtains in the windows, picked flowers for the many vases, and had made one room especially cozy, she felt quite at home. Daisy likes to draw and often paints pictures of the mice and their homes for Mr. Woodmouse's book. He's writing a book about life in the hedge and all the things that happened there in the past. <laughs> oh, do you want to smell the flowers, Bunny? <laughs> Lovely, aren't they? <laughs> do you know something, Bunny? I'm hungry. Are you? Yes, I thought you might be. Want a bite? Is it good? <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Woodmouse's daughter Primrose feels a little lonely sometimes, and this is why she feels happy when Wilfred can come to play. In bad weather, they can explore the mansion and beg tidbits from Mrs. Krusty Bread in the kitchen. And when the weather is good, they are free to roam the hedge. They both know that they must never stray beyond the field without a grown-up's permission. That's how they came to be lost in Chestnut Wood. What's that? What's that? Oh no! It's a weasel! It found Wilfred and now it's coming to get me! Primrose? Wilfred! What are you doing? I thought you were the weasel. The weasel? There's no such thing as a weasel. Remember? You're yeah, right. Oh, I was silly to be so. Huh? Violet Krusty Bread, the cook at the old oak Ooh. mansion, is Alfred Toadflax's cousin. She's been living and working for the Woodmouse family for most of her life. When Mr. Krusty Bread was alive, he used to do all the odd jobs around the mansion. But now Conker, who is married to her daughter, does those jobs. Mrs. Krusty Bread looks after the kitchen and is well known for her baking. She makes wonderful bread and buns and loves to try out new recipes for parties. A birthday cake or a wedding cake, for example. That looks quite wonderful. <laughs> Mrs. Krusty Bread and Mrs. Apple often swap tips and recipes. Primrose's grandpa, Mr. Apple, looks after the store stump and spends most of the day there checking the supplies to make sure that there's enough food for everyone. Mrs. Apple can usually be found at home at Crab Apple Cottage. The first room you come to is the pantry, where Mrs. Apple stores her homemade preserves, jams, fruit vinegar, salt, and pickles. If you go up the stairs, you will find a little laundry room. Very useful for Mrs. Apple when the weather is bad. She can wash clothes in there, put them through the rollers to squeeze out the water, and then hang them up to dry. The kitchen is a very cozy room. Like all Brambley Hedge kitchens, there is a cooking range and an open fire. Mrs. Apple spends a good deal of her day there because she loves cooking so much. The sitting room is up the stairs again, and it's here that Mr. and Mrs. Apple sit in the evening and talk about what they've done all day. The bedrooms are at the top of the tree, together with the bathroom and attics. 
Mrs. Apple's granddaughter, Primrose, loves to come and spend the night with her grandparents in her mother's old bedroom. Watch out, Basil. You can never be too careful. Basil Brightberry knows all about the wines and cordials that he looks after for the mice of Brambley Hedge. He has a large cellar, one that is especially dark and dry. He keeps most of his bottles here. If there is a celebration, there will be a feast. And if there is a feast, there will be punch for the speeches. And they will need fruit punches for the dancing afterwards. Basil's punches are made of elderberry, wild strawberry, crab apple, wild plums, primroses, and bramble tips. Ah, do you think I'll be able to play like that, Basil? Absolutely. Although Basil is quite an old mouse and rather forgetful, he is always ready for fun. He plays the violin as well as the flute. And so when Wilfred was given a flute for his birthday, Basil was able to help with lessons. Poppy Eyebright took over the running of the dairy stump from her grandmother, Ivy. She makes all the butters, creams, and cheeses for the hedge. There's plenty of cheese here for everyone. When old Mrs. Eyebright left for the Hawthorne Rise, Poppy moved into the rooms above the dairy, where she has a little sitting room, a bedroom, a kitchen, and a tiny bathroom. It is hard work and tiring too, for every morning Poppy has to get up early to greet the friendly cows who supply milk for the hedge on their way to graze in Buttercup Meadow. Poppy's nearest neighbor is Dusty Dogwood at the flour mill, but because Poppy and Dusty are so shy, it took Friends? the whole of one spring to find Dusty the courage to speak like to each you. other. All the mice were delighted when Dusty and Poppy announced they were to be married. Everyone knows they will be very happy together. This is the most wonderful day of my life. Oh, I love you so, Poppy. Dusty Dogwood is the miller for Brambley Hedge. He lives in the flour mill and grinds the nuts and seeds that the mice collect and bring to him. He makes it into flour that is bagged and stored in the mill before being taken to the store stump. He is called Dusty because he is always covered in flour. The kindest, handsomest mouse in Brambley Head. He's a cheerful sort of mouse and has a soft spot for Wilfred. He's always ready to listen to Wilfred's latest wild plan for adventure. And so Wilfred happily tells him everything. However, one day, the tables were turned. It was Dusty who told Wilfred of his love for Poppy and his fears that she cared for another mouse. Wilfred and Primrose were able to help Dusty win Poppy's love. Almost isn't enough, Mr. Woodmouse. Ivy Eyebright, Poppy's grandmother, is the oldest mouse in the hedge. She lives in Hawthorne Rise, which is not too far from her neighbors. Summer or winter, she is always ready to join in with all that goes on in Brambley Hedge. She loves to chat and talk about long ago, and can forget that younger mice have less time on their paws. Oh, thank you, Mrs. However, Eyebright. she is a wise old mouse, and Mr. Woodmouse often asks her about the correct way to do things. There are still mushrooms to pick. You couldn't fit any more berries into that basket if you tried. Well, let me see. Now, there was a time when the snow was so deep that the mice were able to hold a winter ball. Mrs. Eyebright was the only mouse old enough to be able to remember the last one. She is happy to know that the winter ball, like all the other important Brambley Hedge traditions, will continue for many years to come. So remember, if you do come across Brambley Hedge when you're out walking, don't tell anyone where it is, will you? The mice are very shy and would not want to be disturbed.